Good evening, everyone. I am going to be talking tonight about the hot coffee case, also known as the uh, Livec versus McDonald's Incorporated. So McDonald's Incorporated, I'm sure, is not a uh, company that none of us have heard of. It is um, probably one of the largest, if not the largest, fast food chains in the world right now. It was founded in 1940 and has locations in 120 countries. It has 37,855 uh, different locations and employs 210,000 people. So needless to say, it's a pretty large, large business. So their growth in the last five years. So as you can see on the chart, the assets have been um, expanding exponentially, especially from 2018 to 2020. Uh, went down a little bit, 15 to 16, but 2018 and 2020 has been growing uh, pretty much, as you'd say, off the charts. Uh, but however, the revenue and the income have a declining trend. So the revenue has been steadily declining from 2015 through 2020, and the net income had a steady incline until 2019, where it has then dropped off uh, from 2019 to 2020. This is because the company has not been efficient and utilizing the asset resources to promote the shareholders' wealth. So the Liebeck versus McDonald's case. So this case, um, obviously, I'm sure most of you have heard about this case. I know that I heard about this case uh, for years and years. Um, actually did not realize until doing this that the case happened in 1992, as I was born in 91. And I, I seem to remember this as, as a kid. I thought it happened later, later on in the 90s. But, um, Anyway, basically what happened was Liebeck went to McDonald's, got a cup of coffee, uh, spilled the cup on her lap and suffered third degree burns on her thighs and buttocks area from the coffee uh, spilled on her. She spent a total of eight days in the hospital. And then after this, she uh, went to McDonald's and asked them to simply cover her medical expenses because she felt like that it was ridiculous that the coffee was that hot, that it uh, gave her third degree burns when it spilled on her. McDonald's declined $20,000, but did offer to pay her $800. Um, Liebeck did not think this was enough money. Uh, obviously would not cover her medical expenses. So she declined that offer and she hires Reed Morgan as her lawyer to sue McDonald's Incorporated. So once the, um, once the lawsuit took place, uh, it was discovered that McDonald's was in fact keeping their coffee at 190 degrees um, versus the 135 to 150 degree range that the coffee was uh, is supposed to be kept at safely. So at the temp of 190 degrees, it is known that uh, it would easily cause third degree burns if it was to uh, spill on any consumers uh, in just a matter of seconds. The McDonald's Corporation um, claimed that they kept the coffee that hot simply due to it having a better taste and tasting better than um, the competitor's coffee. The company was aware that the coffee was served at a higher temp than recommended uh, by quite a significant margin. It was, like, like I say, it was about 40 degrees, 50 degrees hotter than uh, it is recommended to serve coffee due to the safety of it, if it were to spill on The company was also aware that more than 700 instances, some involving children, uh, had already happened where someone was burned by spilling the coffee on them. And uh, McDonald's Incorporated apparently thought that this was a insignificant number compared to the millions of coffee cups that they sold uh, per day. The jury disagreed and thought that McDonald's uh, was liable for $160,000 in compensation and $2.7 million in punitive damages. The court determined that McDonald's was more concerned with commercial interests, i.e. McDonald's was more concerned with selling more cups of coffee um, than they were concerned with the damage that it may cause to consumers if it were to be spilled. Um, the court also basically ruled that uh, McDonald's should have taken more steps as far as, like you see on all the cups today, you know, caution, hot content, caution, you know, maybe hot, uh, however they word it basically should have labeled the containers and uh, had a warnings that the coffee may have been very hot. 
also should have um, made a better style of container or type of container that is um, less likely to spill. In my opinion, the uh, court ruling was correct in ruling against McDonald's. Uh, like I said, I, I heard this case from a young child and I remember that it always, you know, was kind of played off like, oh man, you can sue someone for anything these days and win even this person sue McDonald's for, you know, spilling coffee on them and won millions of dollars. Well, it turns out when you actually look into the case that, uh, in my opinion, McDonald's was uh, at fault and, and didn't know that their coffee was extremely hot and could possibly cause harm and had caused harm to consumers. So I, I don't think it's right that they shouldn't have to have some responsibility in that when someone uh, gets third degree burns off of spilling coffee. Also, I don't understand as a coffee drinker that, you know, if it's kept at a hotter temperature, um, that it tastes better. In my opinion, that pretty much just means you have to wait longer before consuming your coffee that you just purchased if it's extremely hot. So I don't really understand the mindset behind that. But anyway, the court, you know, forced uh, McDonald's to obviously label their containers, which they have done since then, and, um, and also make containers better that aren't going to spill and also lower the temperature of their coffee to within a range that's not going to, you know, third degree burn you if it touches your skin in a matter of seconds, it can spill on you and be wiped off before it's going to, you know, cause um, detrimental burns to you.